The brain is a complicated thing. A group of outstanding women scientists are working to figure it out better right here in Israel. Today, Brain Circle Italia and ELSC are presenting the Understanding Emotion Symposium. It's a symposium to better understand and discuss and research the role of emotional intelligence in our lives. This series will have eight separate events over the next few months, kicking off today in Jerusalem, continuing across Europe. Eight cities, eight topics, 40 female neuroscientists making groundbreaking discoveries on the brain and its impact on human emotions. Earlier today, I spoke with Professor Hermana Sorek at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, whose work focuses on repressed emotions and trauma. Professor Sorek, thank you so much for being with me on I-24 News. It's a pleasure to be with you. Professor, tell me more about this symposium. What is it about? Who is it for? And what do you hope people learn from these lectures? Okay, so uh, the topic of the series of conferences, it's the opening one of an entire series which will take place in uh, worldwide, I would say, initiating with eight cities in Europe. And the topic is all about emotions with leading women neuroscientists talking about their aspect, their point of view to uh, listeners which include members of our Brain Center at the Hebrew University, the Edmund and Lily Safra Center for Brain Science, as well as members of the Brain Circle, which is a European-wide organization, a network of people interested in brain research that are now uh, wishing to extend their understanding to the field of emotions, which had been neglected for a long time and is going to be focused in the series of meetings. Each meeting is focused on another aspect, and we are starting it here with the question of, should we suppress emotions? Should we express them? What is the impact of either of these directions? How does it affect our lives? How can we embed our lives if we understand better what emotions are all about? Professor, these lectures will cover so many topics, memory, fear, social anxiety, trauma. How much do we know about the brain's role in these issues and these emotions, and how much do we still have to discover, to learn? Well, uh, it's a great question. We know a lot, and we need to find out much more. So the brain, we see the brain as the last frontier. This is the field with the most interesting and answered questions. And women have a lot to contribute in studying this topic. And the, indeed, there is a lot to be done. The Israeli society has been rejecting emotions. It was not accepted well to express emotions in the early years of the state, and maybe that had been necessary to, for survival. Mm -hmm. But we advanced beyond that, and now we wish to understand what emotions are all about and use that understanding to embed our lives for uh, the benefit of many. Professor, your lecture, your expertise focuses in on repressed emotions, how people repress trauma and severe emotions. How common is that in society, that instead of talking about difficult things with a professional therapist or friends or family, that people just bury it? And what does that do to us? Well, uh, repressing emotions has a lot of impact, and uh, people don't... don't apply sufficient importance to the link between brain and body. The brain doesn't function on its own. It keeps connecting to the body. And when someone is stressed, acutely stressed, like post-traumatized, that would also affect 
the inflammatory level that might entail physical diseases. And it's only the understanding of that that will open new treatments and new ways to avoid the damage that negative emotions may entail to our life and survival. Post-trauma patients are known to have a shorter life expectancy. That's not their brain, it's the inflammation that does that. And we need to study brain to body communication. I once had a student and I told him, I'm going to look for the link between brain and body. And he went immediately to all the networks and said, there are only seven other scientists looking at that. That's, that's where we were 10 years ago. Today, there are many more scientists that realize this link, look into that, and will hopefully make a difference. This series of meetings had been initiated by an Italian journalist that I admire for many years, Viviana Kassam, who is herself a, a real expert in the field just because of her link to our brain circle and her attendance and work for our series of meetings on different aspects in neuroscience and what they entail for human embetterment. Professor, what does it mean to you to collaborate and give these lectures with dozens of like-minded women, female scientists and neuroscientists from around the world working together on this issue. As a leading female neuroscientist, what does it mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me because I grew up in a field where the great majority of speakers, final authors, acclaimed scientists were always males. And me, female scientists were pushed aside. And that is true for the entire society. We're not that far from the age when people said if a woman is too much interested in academia, the children might be autistic. That's stupid fake news. Autism is a disease and it's genetically affected and there's much to be learned about how to treat the children. It doesn't have anything to do with the academic interests of their mothers. Viviana Kassam tells me that when she started her career as a, science, as a journalist, she was sent to interview women only because women cannot do really important topics. That's not true either. I think the world is changing today and we need to move on with it and realize that humanity has two halves. They're not equal, they're not the same. They can contribute to each other and should be viewed as such. Professor Sorek, I want to ask about uh, the COVID pandemic. Thankfully, Israel is exiting this fourth wave, but COVID disease, death, lockdowns, economic uncertainty, it's been part of our lives now for, for two years. I'd imagine a lot of people maybe have yeah. repressed emotions because of that, maybe PTSD. I want to ask what your advice would be for people dealing with the impacts of COVID yeah. in this day and age. Right, you're absolutely right, and that's one of the most important topics to our lives, all of us, in the past two years or more. And I was recently called to the Israeli TV, and I was asked about a study that showed that the COVID, the, the coronavirus, may infect brain cells as well. And the interviewer said, but this is terrible news. I said, no, this is good news. Science tells us that when a patient comes to the doctor and complains about memory problems, about difficulties to focus, the doctor should not say, oh, forget it, this is a an, an lung virus. It's a body disease. It doesn't affect the brain. That's not true. So there are consequences to the COVID infection also on the brain. Mm. About one third of those who suffer the more severe forms of the disease will suffer from consequences that affect brain functioning. Again, emotions are 
involved not only for the patients, but also for those who recovered from the disease. And brain research comes into that field as well. And this is good news because science can help us recover and find cure for those who are affected. Really incredible work that you are doing and a really exciting event that is now kicking off in Jerusalem, this uh, symposium, this series of lectures that will travel and take part around the world. Professor Storak, thank you so much for being with us on the Zoom In Show.